Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hey there, it's Cindy again. Welcome back to QuickBooks Desktop 2022. I want to go ahead in this video, which is video number nine of module four, and talk to you a little bit about invoicing your customers for products and services. We've been talking about invoicing in the previous videos, but that was actually taking estimates you've created and turning them into invoices. Not every business uses the estimate feature. If that's the case, you would just start here and just start with the invoicing and go forward. Let's move over to QuickBooks and I will show you how to create an invoice. To create an invoice for a customer, you'll find the Create Invoices icon right here on your home screen. The first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and choose your customer and your job. I'll just choose Robert Allard Remodel Job. Make sure you choose the class if you're using the class feature. Remember to use this consistently so that your reports are accurate. You've also got an option to choose a template. I'm going to use the default one. We'll talk about templates in a later module, but you can choose different templates for each invoice. You'll want to make sure you choose the correct date that you're creating the invoice. And remember that invoices are numbered. It's going to number the next one sequentially unless you change that number. Invoice numbers can include letters if you'd like. You just type those in. You want to make sure you have the correct billing address for your customer as well. Each customer can have different terms. I'm going to go ahead and say net 30 for this one. And you'll notice that if I choose net 30, the due date defaults to 30 days from this date here. You can always change the due date if you want a specific date to be the date that this is due. Here's where you're going to click down in the body of the invoice and you're going to choose an item that you're going to invoice your customer for. You'll see on this list, these are the items that are already set up. If you wanted to create a new one, you would click on add new and we'll go through that in a later module. Right now, we're just going to choose a couple of these. We'll choose floor plans. And if you wanted to add a different description, this will let you type as much as you want. It will word wrap all the way down to the bottom. Let's say that we're going to charge our customer for two sets of floor plans and we're going to charge $1,000 a piece. You'll see that it does the calculation for you when you tab over to the amount column. And the last column tells you that for sales tax purposes, this item is not subject to sales tax. On the next line down, I'm going to choose labor and I'll add a description. I'll add labor for gutting the kitchen to prepare for the remodel. We'll say it was a quantity of 30 hours to do that and we charged $50 an hour. You can see it did the calculation. It's $1,500 for the total amount. And this is also a non-taxable item. And you can keep adding as many items as you like to this list. A couple things to notice at the bottom on the left, you have a place for a customer message. There are some pre-built ones, but if you wanted to add your own, you would click on add new and create a new message to add to this list that you could use in the future. Underneath that, it says memo. That is strictly for you. That memo will not print on the invoice. And then you'll see that this customer is subject to sales tax if you charge sales tax in your business. If you wanted to change that, you would change it to non-taxable sales. On the right-hand side, if your customer is subject to sales tax, you will see the tax they're being charged, the total for that tax. If they've made any payments to this invoice, you would see that right here. You wouldn't see any payments until actually this has been saved and then you've applied a payment and opened this back up. And that's when you would see if there were any payments applied. And then of course the balance due right here. All you need to do at this point is go ahead and save and close. And if you've made any changes, if you remember I changed the class up here and I also changed the terms, it will ask you if you'd like those changes to be reflected in the setup. Just go ahead and say yes. And now that invoice has been created. Let's go to our customer center over on the left here just to look. If I go ahead and click on Robert Allard, you will see that there are now two invoices. The top one is the one that we just did. It was dated December 28th. If I just wanted to see the invoices for that job, then I would click on the remodel job on the left and see just those invoices. If you want to open that invoice up, just double click anywhere on that line. 
and now you will see that invoice. You can make changes if you need to and then save it and those changes will be saved. A couple things I wanna point out at the very top, you'll notice there is a main tab and this is the tab you're going to use the most often. There are several different items here that I want to point out. First, if you're looking through your invoices for a particular one and you just can't find it, use these arrows to go left or right to look at the next or previous. And if you still can't find it, you can click on this find option and then put in some criteria and QuickBooks will search for you. Here's your new option if you wanna create a new blank invoice. This will save the one you're on. This is the exact same thing as if you came down to the bottom and clicked on save and new. Next, you can save your invoice. If you're working on this and it's taken a while, you can go ahead and just say save invoice. You can also save this as a PDF file if you'd like. Here's where you would delete that invoice. You can create a copy of this invoice. If you need to create another one that's very similar, you can go ahead and make a copy and then just change whatever you need to change and save it. We're going to talk about memorizing in a later module, but what this would allow you to do is if you had an invoice that needed to go out once a month, let's say, you can actually memorize it and QuickBooks will automatically create that invoice for you next month and then you can send it out. You can also mark this as pending. And what that basically means is that if you have an invoice that you want to put in QuickBooks, but you don't want it to count in your numbers when you run reports, you can do that. It will be inactive and you can always turn it back on when you're ready to activate it again. Let's look at print preview so that you can see what this invoice will look like. You can see this invoice actually has the company name and address. It doesn't have the phone number, fax, email, any of that information. So you probably want to customize this template. You can see it has the word invoice on the right. There's the date, the invoice number, and then all the information about the invoice. We're going to customize in a later module. I'll go ahead and hit close at the top. You'll also notice that you can email this. Now notice there is a checkbox over here for print later and email later. If you've got several that you're working on, you can check those boxes and when you're ready to email all of them, you can email the batch or if you're ready to print them all, you'll see there's an option for batch under here as well. Here you can attach a file. If there's some file that would pertain to this invoice and you don't wanna to have to get out of QuickBooks and go find it, you can attach it here and open it up easily. Here's an option that we haven't talked about yet, add time slash cost. If you're doing job costing in your business, that basically means that you want to make sure every transaction you enter is tied to a job. Then you can run job costing reports. You could run a profit and loss, for example, to see how much you've made or lost on a particular job. Each transaction will have a place where you can choose the customer or job that it pertains to. If you want to be reimbursed from your customer for certain expenses that you might have incurred, when you create those expenses, whether it be a check, credit card transaction, whatever it happens to be, if you've told QuickBooks that it pertains to a particular customer and job, then when you come into this invoice, you can add time slash cost. You can see that here's the time tab. If you had any time you'd created related, you could pull that in. Here's expenses. If you had actually used a credit card and purchased something and tied it back to this job that would be listed, you could check it off, click OK, and then that way it would pull in those expenses. You've got mileage and also items. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK there. You can also apply credits. If you have an existing invoice and you've created a credit memo, you can apply those credits right here. You can also receive a payment for this invoice here. Chances are you're not going to be on this screen. You'll probably be on the home screen, but you can do it here. You can create a batch. And that means that if three different customers were going to pay this one invoice, you could actually send this to all three customers. And then also here's refund or credit. You would use this if the customer had already paid the invoice and you were going to issue a refund or credit memo for them to use for future invoice. There's also a formatting tab here. 
I just want you to be aware that this is here. We're going to be looking at some of the options for customizing your templates that I mentioned over here a few minutes ago. We'll look at that a little bit later. Here's your spell check. If you want to insert a line, delete a line, or copy a line, you can do that. There's also some options for sending and shipping. If you ship items and you typically ship through one of these, FedEx, UPS, or US Postal Service, then you can set all that up right from here. And the last tab has some different reports you can run related to invoicing. Most of the time you'll be using that main tab and that's really all there is to actually creating an invoice. Let's go ahead and click save and close at the bottom. If you've made any changes, you might wanna go ahead and save those if it asks you. And now that invoice has been completed. Let's go ahead and move over to video number 10 now, and we're going to talk about receiving customer payments towards those invoices. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2022 course. To take a look at the course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks 2022 videos, click over there.